from monkeys to humans to what? Okay, I don't want to do that. Well, then what do you want to do? I don't know. Something. Wow. Humans are a taller, healthier, and overall improved species than we've ever been before. But how much better can we really get? Really, how much more improvement can we possibly see? We seem to continue to adapt to environmental factors, but is there a limit to where our evolution can go? And more importantly, what could be next for us? These are 10 ways that humans are likely to evolve. Number one is genetic engineering. Technology is on the verge of making genetic engineering possible, opening all sorts of doors for human evolution. And there are many possibilities, like the elimination of negative genes altogether, giving a better quality of life to people. One theory states that we will diverge into two different groups of humans, the tall and rich, genetically superior people, and the short and poor, inferior gene pool humans. Now, we're still quite far from offering genetic engineering as a service, since genetically modifying our food and sometimes even our pets is already a reality which is receiving a fair amount of criticism. Currently, genetically modified crops have become a controversial topic within the food industry, with researchers claiming that it could actually be unhealthy to consume those products and that food containing GMOs should be clearly labeled. But what is certain is that eventually, when all the laws and regulations are settled, we'll create perfect people. I would just like to say when that happens, please don't round up all the bald people because we still have value. We still have value. Number two is no wisdom teeth. Around one million years ago, early humans had larger jaws, which could easily fit all 32 of their teeth, including the wisdom teeth at the back. They also had more use for their teeth too, as their diets consisted more of raw organic things, like dead prey or leaves and roots that are harder to chew. But today, our meat and vegetables are cooked, blended, ripened, and tenderized before we consume them, making them much easier to chew and digest. So, we have much less use for our molars and wisdom teeth than our ancestors, and our jaws have become more rounded and less pronounced as a result. In fact, 35% of modern humans are born without their wisdom teeth, while others tend to get them surgically removed to prevent them from pushing the rest of their teeth out of alignment. And I'm one of those people, it was, it was not a fun experience. So it seems that wisdom teeth are already on their way out. It could be as soon as the next generation who stopped growing them. Only the problem is we're gonna have less David after dentist type videos where we're gonna see people high after getting their wisdom teeth out. <sighs> Let's enjoy them while we have them. Number three is taller. Today's humans are nearly four inches taller on average than our relatives from 150 years ago. The reasons for this may have to do with the nutrient-rich diets that we receive as children. Today's kids are given a lot more variety in their meals than an average person's kids in the 1800s. Now you might be thinking, but if our diets keep improving, our next generations might become tall enough to film a reboot of Space Jam or domesticate giraffes as living pets. But don't worry, that's not gonna happen because actually our growth will hit a peak. The ceiling of this growth depends entirely on our genes, since they are the determining factor in how much we can achieve physically when given the right amount of nutrients. Trust me, I tried eating a lot of vegetables and didn't make me taller. If height becomes a desirable trait, we'll just have to start breeding the tallest people together and create some kids with genes that are capable of making them look like circus stilt walkers. Number four is less hair. Hold up, the future of humanity could look just like me? All right, all right, all right. Scientists claim that humanity could actually evolve to grow less body hair since millions of people are constantly trying to get rid of it. As we have progressed through evolution, we've already shed a ton of it, and with more clothes and weather protection, our need for it decreases. Both men and women already use hair removal tools and treatments to give them smoother skin, and people with less hair are generally seen as more attractive and more likely to breed. In evolutionary terms, the hair on our heads has most likely been kept as a useful way of shielding our scalps from the sun or as an extra layer of warmth against the cold weather. I can vouch for that, I need toques all day. As for body hair, that may have stayed around because it helps exhibit pheromone scents or just because it helps retain the heat around our junk. But future humans could look completely hairless and probably shinier, just like a seal. <laughs> Number five is less muscle mass. 
With our increasing dependence on technology, we are now more prone than ever to sitting on our butts all day. Technology will also soon control most of the common labor jobs and many manual labor jobs. With robots taking up all the hard work, we will need our physical strength less and less. And if we ever put colonies in space, you can expect your muscle mass to decrease significantly with the loss of gravity. If we go further back in the human evolutionary process, our evolved weakness compared to our species ancestors, chimpanzees, may have been a trade-off for the super smart brains that we possess today. The less energy that we devote to powering our muscles could end up benefiting us in the intelligence department. Basically, our bodies just just became generators to power smarter brains. Number six are weaker immune systems. With the increased usage of things like health supplements and antibiotics, future humans could have a harder time combating sickness and disease. Not only will their bodies become dependent on using vitamins and medicines to produce antibodies, but viruses and diseases will mutate and become more immune against the drugs that we use. Personally, I blame those people that use hand sanitizers all day. You know who you are. These super viruses could cause epidemics and force us to rely more on new medicines and medical technology, making us more naturally susceptible to illness. And with our evolutionary forecast showing humanity's physical decline, our increasingly convenient new gadgets and machines that remove the need for us to move around won't be doing us any favors fitness-wise. If we're going to beat the ever-evolving super viruses of the future, we better hope it's also possible to leave our biological bodies and enter our brains into something that isn't susceptible to disease. But that's the matrix stuff and that's just a whole nother video. Number seven is selective hearing. You may have heard this term used in a negative way by your parents or maybe by your significant other when you've been accused of not listening. Well, selective hearing is something that already somewhat exists right now, but it's all in your mind. You can focus on certain sounds through a mental ability known as the cocktail party effect. This was researched in 1953 by cognitive scientist Colin Cherry. This basically allows your mind to block out specific audio sources that are playing at the same time, like paying attention to one conversation at a party. A study of selective hearing in 2010 found that men have less difficulty overall than women in identifying sounds from specifically targeted sources. Through evolution, our selective hearing may become more honed and give us the ability to silence ambient noises better. Imagine the ability to tune out all Kardashian news or even any Nickelback song. Man, I long for a future like that. Number eight is universal ethnicity. With modern transportation becoming increasingly efficient, humans of all different races have the ability to travel and find romance just about anywhere on Earth. As the likelihood of interracial relationships increases, the mixing of genetics will help to produce new generations of humans who carry a blend of unique traits found in multiple races. In other words, love will literally overcome our differences. That or one night accompanied by 18 years of child support, you know. Either one. Basically, racism as we know it could end, and people will be fairly similar in skin tone. Any distinguishing features of a person's race will lose significance or disappear altogether. But this isn't to say that there will just be peace on Earth once this happens, because as humans, we will almost always be at odds for our differences in opinions or beliefs. Still, making things harder for racists and xenophobes is always a step in the right direction. Number nine is digital immortality. According to the Oxford University Future Future of Humanity Institute's director, Nick Bostrom, future humans may actually be able to develop a way to scan a brain by each atom in order to create a sentient AI from it. This would change natural evolution entirely, ending natural selection and replacing it with evolutionary selection, and thus creating transhumans. They would be able to receive updates, eliminate the basic requirements of staying alive like food, water, and sleep, and travel faster than a speeding bullet. In theory, the creation of transhumans will bring about questions of true consciousness or a true self. In other words, will this AI really be you? And can you continue to experience life through it or is it simply a program that learned to be you? Perhaps we're destined to live on through our digital creations. I mean, just imagine living inside a Super Mario game or even a YouTube video. Mm. And number 10 is we won't evolve. 
Because our population has increased to a massive size and we all live longer, an anthropologist at the American Museum of Natural History, Ian Tattersall, believes that everyone will live long enough to pass down their genes and muddle the gene pool. This would halt the progress of traditional evolution. With our ability to survive regardless of genetic affliction, the Darwinian theory of natural selection may not be applicable to our species anymore. Humans would only be able to evolve in smaller communities that are isolated and carry a smaller gene pool. Not evolving could prove to be perfectly fine for our species since we have achieved a genetic foundation that has taken our population to the highest point that it has ever been at. We're also smart enough to invent programs that can teach themselves and help carry us into the future without having to adapt to our environment. So that all means that we may literally be the final version of humanity. I don't know if that's good or bad because there's some stupid people on this planet. Mm. But big thanks to all of you for watching this video. And if you enjoyed it, remember to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't yet. I'm going to have a brand new video for you tomorrow at 12 West Coast time, 3 Eastern Standard Time. So make sure you come by then. Have a fantastic day.